What's up my friends, my name is Jason Liner and this is my review of the brand new Sony 24-70 G Master 2 lens. This one is light, it's brand new and I'm going to share some really cool results from a video and photography perspective and I hope you like it. This is a hands-on review of the Generation 2 24-70 G Master lens. This is one of Sony's newest lenses and an important one because the 24-70 is a staple in many photographers gear bags. In this review, I was able to use this lens in many different locations, including Miami, Seattle, and San Francisco. I used it on the streets, at the zoo, in the rainforest, during daytime and nighttime conditions, indoors and outdoors, to really put it through its paces so I could give you a really comprehensive look at what this lens can do. We'll take a look at the build of the lens, video footage, resulting images from what I shot, compare it to other lenses in the same range, and then I'll let you know what I think about it. This is meant to be a straight to the point, no BS review, and I hope it helps those of you out there who are thinking about taking the plunge on this expensive piece of equipment. So get ready for this review, I hope you guys like it. Field quality. The first thing you'll notice different about this lens is the fact that when you zoom in and out, the lens physically moves in and out compared to the version one of the 2470G Master, which had all of its zoom movement done internally. The lens comes with a manual autofocus, manual focus switch, manual aperture ring, and an iris lock switch so you can lock in your aperture on the aperture ring so you don't accidentally move it. It comes with focus lock buttons which can also be programmed to some other function of your desire and it has a smooth tight zoom selection switch so you can determine if you want the zoom function and feel on the lens to be smoother or tighter. The lens hood has a cool little window that you can use to adjust filters which could be very useful for those using polarizers or ND filters as this lens will get a lot of use by those wanting to shoot video. Image quality. My name is Jason Lanier. I'm here in the Ho National Rainforest in Washington, and this is my nature shoot with models. Getting ready in the forest. I'm getting attacked by mosquitoes. When it comes to the images coming out of this lens, I was extremely satisfied with what I was able to capture. Here's a series of images that shows the sharpness of this lens at 24 millimeters, 48 millimeters, and 70 millimeters. At 24 millimeters, we can capture the entire landscape with or without a model. And when we zoom into the shot, we can see that our subject is very sharp at f2.8. 48 millimeter gives us a look at what this lens does in the middle of its zoom range. And as you can see, the sharpness is there. 70 millimeters shows us the lens all the way at its full extension. And again, the sharpness and performance are there. I really enjoyed the colors I was able to produce with the lens from an image standpoint. When we look at the bulk it produced with the 2470 G Master II, I was quite pleased with the roundness of the shapes in the background at 51 millimeters, as well as how it transitioned from the center to the edges of the bokeh ball. When we look at it zoomed all the way in at 70 millimeters, which is where we should get the biggest impact, it produces very nice bokeh as well. We can't expect any lens at f2.8 to do what the f1.2 or f1.4 lenses will do from a bokeh perspective. But my overall impressions of using this lens for portraits and just for image quality, I just love it. Video quality. We're scanning the area. We saw approximately two iguanas around the perimeter in the rainforest. <laughs> Where are we going now? We're going to see the wild cats, the wild tigers. Nice. Very nice. We've got to stay alert. It's very dangerous in the rainforest. <laughs> we went to the zoo to film some animals with the 2470 using the Sony a7 IV. This not only gave me a good opportunity to get some nice footage of these animals, but to also test the lens while moving around since it doesn't have any lens stabilization. As a longtime Sony shooter, I can tell you that I only worry about lens stabilization when I shoot video footage, not stills. But since Sony has in-body image stabilization in the cameras, it really isn't an issue for me. Testing the rack focus using the touch screen on the a7 IV, the 2470G Master focuses smoothly between different focal points and I do like the way it transitions between the two. I also didn't hear any sound coming from the lens motor when the lens was focusing, which will make videographers happy for when they are shooting video with a shotgun mic on top of the camera. Overall, the focus with this lens and the a7 IV in both steels and videos was just, it was just great. It's what Sony's known for. Comparable lenses. 
The comparisons for this lens have to start with its predecessor, the G Master version 1. From a spec perspective, they are pretty similar with a few notable exceptions. The main differences are the minimum focus distance, magnification ratio, the elements, aperture blades, length at full extension, and of course, it's nearly a half pound lighter. This lens is 18% smaller and 22% lighter than its older brother. If all the specs are equal, I usually prefer a lens that doesn't physically move in and out when you zoom. But you pay a price for that convenience when it comes to size, weight, and things like magnification and minimum focus distance. From an image perspective, I just really prefer the look of this lens over the version 1. Much more than I thought I would. There's just something different about the way the stills turned out on this that I loved compared to its older brother. And to me, regardless of if a lens has internal or external zoom, I'll always choose the one that gives me better images. So for me, the choice is simple. The version 2 is the winner. When we look at other options out there like the Tamron 28-75, this is really comparing apples and oranges. Tamron produces some really nice lenses for the budget-conscious photographer. I've used the 28-75 and really like it. It's a nice lens, but it is not in the same class and performance as the G Master. Build quality and performance are superior on the G Master lenses compared to the Tamron, and we can all feel that in the significant price difference between the two brands. The closest lens to compare this to is the Canon RF 24-70mm lens. Canon was slow to the mirrorless game as we all know, but that also means that their lenses are newer and better than Sony's version 1 mirrorless lenses. So what we see from Sony is their version 2 lenses are much more in line with the Canon's RF glass which is great. Because the Canon RF glass is, well, wow. I hope this has helped. I'm not huge into reading specs, I'm much more about results. Because at the end of the day, isn't that what it's all about? If you'd like to join me live to learn with me, please visit www.jasonlinear.com register or join me on your computer from anywhere in the world by visiting patreon.com slash photography. Big thanks to AVC Photo Store and School for getting this lens to me. They're a really great place in Miami that you can check out by visiting a link in the description below. I just love those guys. Make sure to drop a comment and let me know what you think. Thanks to Alyssa and Sophia for doing such a great job as models and helping me make this video. And thanks to all of you out there for watching. I couldn't do this without your support. So until next time, keep shooting, never give up on your dreams. Find a regular works for you. And remember, you only have one chance to get it right. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Get ready for the magic. Stupid. You're ready for the magic? Really? What oh, magic? It's got me. There's no magic. That's the magic right there. The magically flying hair.